you are such a genuine gem. Thank you for clicking on my Foul Play February series. I'm Brooke McKenna, but today's case is about a live tweeted murder. Now, we all share things to social media, so if you had a murder case that was happening in front of you, would you tweet about it? Because this person sure did. By the way, I am posting so much content this month. Every single day is going to be a new video for you. So if you are interested in that, I would love that you make sure you're subscribed and thumbs up this video. And if you want to share my channel with a friend, I would be greatly appreciative of that. It means the world to me that you guys not only support me, but want me to grow so much. And of course, I want that for myself, for these victims, and to make this a sustainable career for myself at some point. So it would mean the world if you would share it. But let's get back to the story. It was 2017 at Ridge Complex 3801 in Gainesville, Florida. This is where a crime scene had not yet been found because it was not yet one. It was just an apartment. But on February 13th of 2017, a roommate in this apartment heard three loud bangs. They were on the third floor, but they heard them coming from the second floor, which was where their roommate lived. He felt something was off, but it wasn't until five minutes later that he would be sure of it. The fire alarm started sounding, and when he ran downstairs to see what was happening, he smelled something burning. When he looked out the window, he saw his roommate driving away in her car, and when he went to search the apartment, he found a man lying face down in her bed. It was her boyfriend that was living with her. This roommate immediately called 911, but after that, went to Twitter to vent about what was happening. At 3.58, he wrote, So, um, just found out my roommate murdered my boyfriend in our apartment. Dot dot dot. I dot dot dot. And when he tweeted this, most people thought that it was just some hoax or some viral, scary Twitter thread that was more fiction than anything. And he didn't necessarily post it to attract anybody. He was just venting on the situation to his small amount of followers that he had. But now that he had so many people discussing this, his tweet was gaining so much traction and people wanted to know if this was real or not and didn't necessarily believe him. Well, the next day he had all the proof he needed. Her mugshot. Now, this roommate of his that had fled had actually called 911 herself that night, saying that she had shot someone who was badgering her for money and then she was suicidal. And so, Catherine Jean Toner was arrested at her parents' home and booked for homicide, first degree murder premeditated of her boyfriend, Ricky Ortez. And when this roommate named Chase finally tweeted this mugshot with the caption, oh my god. People finally believed him, but he didn't really gain anything from that, and in fact, we had lost a human. Someone had been murdered. But that's the thing with humans. I think we all have such a morbid curiosity, and that's why there are true crime YouTube channels, true crime documentaries, not only to make sure these mistakes don't happen again, and because we have an obsession with things we don't understand, and especially now that we have social media, it's much easier to put it out on a platform to deal with it rather than talking to someone or a therapist. We just kind of spew our feelings to people who might relate, which in return makes us feel better that we're not alone, and it's not necessarily a bad thing in that sense, but it is something we all seem to do more and more. But that's not all, because then at 5.41 on February 14th, the day after this has all happened, the roommate Chase tweeted a photo and then a video of a hotel room with the caption, thanks for the hotel room, that had been gifted to him from the police so they could investigate the crime scene, because of course, that was his home, and if they blocked it off, where was he to go? So they bought him in a hotel room and he tweeted a picture of it, which just made this even more real if you didn't believe this mugshot. That night, however, at 11.10, he tweeted something that sounded like the plot of a Lifetime movie. And it read, just found out from an investigator that she wrote death on the calendar in our kitchen and none of us noticed. Death on the calendar. 
Not even one that was just in her bedroom, it was in the kitchen for all of the roommates to see. And if imagining living with someone who not only murdered someone but completely planned it out didn't freak you out enough, going back to that crime scene would. And that's what they had to do. They headed back. It was the next day, that afternoon, so the 15th, and they went into back to their apartment. The crime scene was done. They were done looking at everything, and so they got to go back but would you want to? I mean, the night before, they had gone back to the apartment and they still couldn't get in. He had posted a picture with crime scene tape over the doors to the apartment with the caption, sigh. But on the 15th, that next day, they did go back inside. And once they did, it was tweeted three pictures with the caption, well, girls, I'm packing my sh and moving. And these three pictures, one of them was of evidence tape. The second was of the bedroom door where this all happened. And he had, it had been taken on Snapchat. And in the little message, it said, Oomph was murdered in that room two days ago. And then the third was more information on this entire case. And it was from the Gainesville Police Department. It read, the Gainesville Police Department arrested a woman from Gainesville in connection with the shooting death of her ex-boyfriend. Police arrested Catherine Toner, 24, late Monday night following an investigation after she called 911 to report she shot a man inside her apartment at the Ridge Apartments in Southwest Gainesville. That man was Jose Ortiz the third, 26. Police said the two broke up one week ago and Ortiz still lived with Toner in that apartment. Ortiz's father told TV20 Tuesday his son went to the apartment to pick up his belongings. The two had a phone conversation beforehand and that was the last time he heard from his son. A roommate heard gunshots Monday afternoon and found Ortiz dead with gunshot wounds to the head. He looked out the window and saw Toner driving away. Toner called 911 saying she was suicidal and a guy was in her house harassing her for money. She shot the man and said she still had the gun. According to the arrest report, Toner didn't say she shot him in self-defense, but that she loved him. Toner was later found at her parents' home. The deputies found the gun in the kitchen drawer. Gainesville police are still trying to figure out a motive. The next tweet from him came only a few minutes later, probably when he found it as he was walking through the house, and it was of bullet holes in the wall with the caption, oh my god, once again. But the next day, he jokingly tweeted, do you think I need a note excusing my absence from class because my roommate offed her boyfriend in my home? And although it's very strange to tweet about this entire case and then to joke about it, I don't necessarily think that he had ill intentions or was doing it maliciously in any way. I think that it was his way to cope. And he kind of explained it in an interview he did where he said, I really didn't expect this to blow up like it did. I'm bad at reacting to serious situations, so I thought I could just go to Twitter. They were dating ever since I moved in in August. I don't know how long before that, but apparently they broke up like a week or two prior to this. I literally can't believe it happened. But when 24-year-old Catherine Jean Toner was brought in for questioning, she admitted, I shot him in the head, but also said that she never meant to hurt anyone. She said that the man she shot was someone she loved, but never officially named him as Jose or Ricky Ortiz. The police kind of put that together, that he was the victim and was her boyfriend or her ex-boyfriend at the time. But they also found the gun, the murder weapon, in her parents' kitchen drawer and where they, where she told them it would be. And they also found a suicide note from Catherine in her bedroom at her apartment, confessing her love for Ricky on it. The calendar with death on it was written in all caps with hearts around it on February 14th. Apparently, Catherine had reached out to Ricky's mother after the breakup, wanting him to come and collect his belongings, but insisting that it would be him that would come and pick it up. That day, she left work to meet him at her apartment, where she ended up shooting five times while standing in between Ricky and the door to get out, but Ricky was only hit by four of those bullets. Now, the roommate said he never heard arguing or screaming, even though there were paper-thin walls in the apartment before the shooting. He had just heard the bangs. Ricky had apparently been shot four times in total, but twice was when he had already fallen to the ground. 
Catherine was then kept in Alusha County Jail while awaiting trial. It was that April when she was found guilty and charged with first degree murder, premeditated and sentenced to life in prison without parole. But it had actually been found, which is an interesting tidbit I wanted to add in here, that in 2006, 11 years before any of this happened, Catherine had actually reported that her former boyfriend, who was Ricky Ortiz, had stolen her stuff and went and pawned it off. Now, they seemed very on again, off again. She said it was her former boyfriend at the time, but they were obviously back together when the murder happened. But she had filed this complaint saying that he had pawned her things and she was very angry about it. She had found out because she discovered the pawn receipt while she was cleaning up and she confronted him about it and he just said he was low on money. He had taken a Nikon Coolpix camera, an external storage drive, and an Atlec portable speaker, but she told police she wasn't certain she actually wanted to press charges or file a report at all, but she just wanted her stuff back. But the victim, Ricky Ortiz, his family just has lost such a beautiful soul in their life and he was not only a part of their family but he was also a father to three girls, Kinley and Kylie who were six and Sophia who was only two. They have opened a GoFundMe for his daughters because they lost their father to this senseless act of violence and so if you want to donate, I will leave the link down below. It's not, of course, mandatory, but his three daughters do now have one less person supporting them. And just the loss of their father is heartbreaking and co was completely unnecessary. Why do you think she really did it? Was he stealing? Did she just not want to spend Valentine's Day alone? Was it in self-defense? Although she never once said that and you'd think that'd be the first thing that would come out of your mouth if you were even trying to get out of it. But she just simply, you know, came to terms with she had done it and was okay with going to jail for it. Or was she possibly planning a murder-suicide because of the note that was found in her room and then she just couldn't go through with it? Or did she simply just have something snap or something off inside of her that caused her to suddenly want to kill? Or had she done it before? I find that the, the death on the calendar is very telling because not only does it scream premeditated, but it's also on the wrong day. She had written it, it said, on February 14th, but he died on February 13th. Was this just a mix up in dates? Did he come a day early? Or had she wrote in death on Valentine's Day because Valentine's Day to her being alone was death? Was it something that was completely, you know, coincidental and in this case just made her even more guilty, which she was, so that's okay? Or do you think that it really was meant to plan what she was going to do? I just find that very eerie. But just the fact that it was so senseless and didn't seem like there was any reason why this man had to die just gets me so upset and I would just love to know if she had any remorse doing this because she seemed very accepting of what she had done and what would become of her because she did that and it doesn't seem like she even cared or thought about the life that she had taken only that he wasn't her boyfriend anymore and so it didn't matter to her but there it wasn't widely enough talked about to know if she you know had remorse if all the little details so if you do know anything about that please leave it down below because it really wasn't that talked about other than the fact that it was live tweeted i couldn't find much about the actual case and do you think you would turn to social media if something like this happened near you i think a lot of people would nowadays and i don't know if that's necessarily horrible um I think that we do use it as a way to cope, but it's not necessarily the best way to cope either. Anyways, it's not about him, it's about the victim and his killer. If you are liking my videos, please make sure to thumbs up and come back tomorrow because there will be a new one. But don't ever forget to speak up. Your voice is powerful enough and I love you to absolute pieces. Okay, bye.